Hello everyone, my name is David Perovich and I'm a research officer with the Department of Primary Industries in Narragong. Today I'm going to give you a presentation on the long-term trends in cotton water productivity. And this is one of four presentations on, from the Water Productivity Benchmarking Project that were delivered at the Association of Australian Cotton Scientists Conference in Armidale in 2019. And this project is made possible thanks to the funding from the CIDC. So the objective of this work is to update the long-term trends in cotton water productivity across the Australian cotton industry. And this, these long-term trends in water productivity were last updated in 2013, where they established that the cotton industry had made a 40% improvement in its water productivity over the then previous 10 years. So we revisited this data from 2013, and then we added five years of new data uh, to it to update and reassess those long-term trends in water productivity across the whole Australian industry. So when we talk about water productivity, it's the number of bales of cotton per megalitre of water. And we can measure that, the amount of water that we're interested in depends on the type of questions we're asking about water productivity. So we might be interested in a question like, how much water does it take to grow cotton? In which case we'd want to know uh, all of the water that the cotton crop uses. Growth. Irrigation water, rainfall, and any soil moisture that's been stored in the, in the field that the crop acts When we've got all of those pieces together, we, and we can measure what's called the Gross Product Water Use Index, or GPWUI. Um, and what we find is that at the scale that we're looking at across the entire Australian industry, the soil moisture component is not always available. So we have to rely on a partial measure of, of gross product water use, the GPW partial, which accounts for irrigation water and rainfall. And that is by far the, the most important components of, uh, of all water the crop uses. The soil moisture component is a small component, but important. But so looking at the trends in GPW partials, gives us a very good indication of what's happening with the whole water use. But what we might be interested in is a slightly different question, is how much irrigation water does a crop, does cotton use? And how has that changed over time? I mean, when we think about the water that's being accessed from rivers and bores, how much of that is being um, used for cotton production? And I said, how has that changed over time? And when we look at just the irrigation water, we call that the irrigation water use index. So we're going to look at the response of these three indices over the, uh, and, and the long term trends of these three indices across the industry. So the, um, the data set that we put together is based on industry data that goes back to the cotton season, uh, the Australian summer of 1987-1988. And for all of the data that we've got, we have water, we have information on water use. Uh, so we can calculate uh, irrigation water, I mean, we can calculate the irrigation water use index for all of the studies, for all the data that we have. But there are only a handful of studies uh, where we're able to calculate the full. GPW, where we've got the soil moisture component, but we've got a reasonable number of, uh, uh, for most of the studies, we've got irrigation water and rainfall, and we can look at partial GPW. What was also very interesting is that we had an independent data set uh, coming from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, uh, agricultural water use, that we could use to cross validate our, our data against. Um, I'll show you a bit into the results. When we look at the irrigation water use, how productive is irrigation water, we see that going back to the late 80s, there's been a very clear, strong, steady, and statistically significant improvement in water productivity over the time. 
And in fact, when we look back at water productivity five years ago, uh, water productivity in 2018 was significantly higher than it was in 2013. And when we compared that industry data for irrigation water use index with the ABS data, so it's independent cross validation, here we've got the industry data in the purple circles and the ABS data in gray diamonds. You can see that number one, there's a very close agreement in the data, the two data sets, but most interestingly, the trend in improved water productivity is almost identical. So that's a really nice validation of the data set. Uh, and you just, yeah, of course. When we look at the, um, the productivity of irrigation plus rainfall, we see the same trend as we would, and we would expect this, but we see a steady, statistically significant improvement in water productivity over going back to 1995, over the last uh, two and a half decades. When we have a look at the trend that we calculated for the data up to 2018, we compare that to um, the, the rate of improvement we would have estimated with the data from 2013, we see the water productivity is actually increasing at a faster rate than we would have thought uh, the data we had five years. So not only is water productivity significantly higher than it was in 2013, the, the rate of improvement we can see now is actually uh, is increasing at a faster rate than we would have, than we would have estimated five years ago. And that's because there was a bit of a lull in water productivity for a couple of years coming out of them as we came out of the burning ground. And then finally, when you look at the full profile of water, we see the same trend as we did for the, the partial GPW, which is what we expect. Again, a long, a strong, steady, statistically significant improvement in water productivity over the past few decades. So this work that I've uh, presented here is part of a, a manuscript that we're putting together for peer review, so a scientific journal paper that will hopefully be coming out later on in the year, and much more detail on what we did and Change, the, the rate of change, the particular, uh, the details can be found in that, in that paper when it comes out. But this work has been part of a, a long-term project co-funded by CIDC and New South Wales DPI called the Water Productivity Benchmarking Project that has looked at uh, water productivity across the cotton industry with the main objective of investigating whether the industry is using water responsibly and efficiently. And so that study goes back. Uh, we've been monitoring water productivity for the last five years. Um, and the long term results will also feed into this the CIDC sustainability report 2019, which will also be coming out this year. One thing we have picked up from our long-term monitoring is that while we can see we've got a good idea of these long-term trends that I've just outlined here, we still need to understand a bit more about the interseasonal variations in water productivity, how it changes from one year to another and what are the drivers of that. So as we move forward we'll be benchmarking water productivity on, on an annual basis as we go forward. Finally, uh, this work was not was done with a lot of cooperation and collaboration and so big thanks go out to first to Guy Roth from the University of Sydney for sharing the data set that he put together when he updated the long-term trends in 2013. Guy is a co-author in this study, as is Janelle Montgomery. And big thanks to Janelle and to Ali Chaffee for the foundational work that they did on the benchmarking project. We're just building on that. It's the great work that they did done in the past. Also, thanks to Jim Purcell, Aquatech, the water track software that he developed has been a key part of the benchmarking project for the last 12 years. It's an important part of identifying the data that we collect and uh, calculating the water balance that we use. And thanks to John Hornbuckle, who was a 
partner in the project at Deakin University in the ERISTAT technology, also uh, an important part of our quality assurance data collection. So finally, if you're interested in the work uh, that we've presented here in terms of the long-term trends, or if you're interested in the benchmarking project, particularly if you're a grower or a consultant who'd like to be involved in the benchmarking project, please contact Ben or myself on our CPI email service. Really interested to hear from you. Many thanks. <laughs>